Welcome to a cruise ship heist. Chapter 53. Embarrassing silence. Lifts are always silent, and for me, a conversation is unfinished. Auli doesn't notice my confusion. Is bisexual what Georgie was suggesting? It was never this fluid in the army. Arriving at the buffet, a tray is handed to me, and a serviette, knife and fork. We split to get our food. Either the hot counter, or salad and cold meats, or an area for stir-fry of your choice. None of us takes that much, and we are soon back together. Although there is no segregation, we sit away from the main seating area in a small section by the door. Crew with buffet privileges gather here. When you said you were sending my friends some money, I thought maybe 50 or 100 pounds. Let's see if it gets there. How much was it? $5,000. Auli's hands dropped to the table. 5000 Oh my God, I need to call them. Audi grabs her phone, a rather poor habit at the dinner table, considering it can hold around 7,000 known germs and viruses. It makes hand-washing on entrance pointless. It may never arrive, I offer, to stop the leak from spreading. It will get there. You did it in a bank. A bank in Colombia. It's a country that has been known to defy all standard rules. Let's not get excited. I hope it does get there. Imagine what they could do with that. She stops herself. But why so much? Why thousands? Because if all the money I have gets taken back, let's say my benefactor loses everything in the casino and demands it back, then that sum is safely in the hands of people who need it. I can show him the transfer slip and say he's lost that bit. A gambler gave it to you. People with money. One minute they have it, the next minute they don't. I might try another transfer tomorrow from St. Vincent. That's if the bank in Damascus will give it to them. She looks worried. There are lots of potential problems. Maybe a second destination there. Christoph appears nervous. I engage him with a look, as I would like to leave and find Hunter. The captain is going to invite you to dinner, sir, he says shyly. What makes you say that? He said it to me in passing. You being here has brought me to his attention, which has been a good thing. I can understand how that works. Any connection opens a door. He may be worried that my volatile presence could also work in reverse. I acknowledge him and excuse myself, leaving before I can be questioned further. Dad? I heard her call. I can't ignore it. Can I open it? What can I say? The damage is done. I think for a moment, but it's probably only seconds. Before I can answer, a cruiser who has enjoyed my talk grabs me. The uniform is a homing beacon. Enthusiastically, she spends what seems an age telling me about her experiences of rationing in the war. I am going to have to develop the art of listening. She eventually leaves, grateful to have shared her story. I look at Aulie, who was waiting for an answer. It appears she has a resolution. I'm opening it, she says forcefully. And I can't think of a good response. Chapter 54 Audit. Crew quarters are strictly forbidden to passengers. For me, it means no go anywhere between deck four or below. The security office is down on deck four at the opposite end to the officer's mess where I had breakfast with Georgie. I've already broken so many rules, but I'm in uniform, so no one will question me. Hunter's busy with two officers and his office door is closed. A closed door normally means a dressing down or a secret briefing. As they're both standing to attention, I would wager that they're in trouble for something. It may be a cruise ship, but it's run with the military discipline of a service ship. There's a chart of pictures outside pertaining to Hunter's department. His picture is at the top, Hunter Wotowski, head of security. He has three lieutenants in very predictable format below him. One's Caucasian, and he no doubt will be Hunter's right-hand man. Of equal rank, there are two other officers, one I suspect Indian and the other Malaysian. 
These will be the officers he uses to communicate accurately with the many Indian and Malaysian crew employed on the ship. Under them are officers with designated areas of control. Nowhere do I see Mrs. L. Ray. That's not to say each security person is on this list. They can't be. My guess is there's quite a team under him. Hunter knows I'm here. He's seen me. The door opens and the two officers leave. Very smart, but your uniform carries no favour here, I'm afraid. You know how it works. I know very well that whilst delivered jovially, Hunter is telling me I have no standing on this ship. He grabs his mobile phone from the desk and turns to his assistant. I'm at lunch. I've already had lunch, but apparently lunch can repeat itself. Hunter leads me to the restaurant where the maitre d' sits us at a table for two, by the window, far away from the guests. Enjoying your holiday? Hunter asks me. It's been an experience. Your commentary went very well, as did your talk this morning. He congratulates me. So far, you're having a positive cruise. I smile. How do you know my talk went well? It's measured on a few things. One of them is being reviewed by Georgie. I guess you'll be all right in that area. Mrs. L. Ray, the woman I was seen with at the airport, I counter and stop to allow him to react. The less you know, the better. I figure I already know too much. I needed your help. And now they're likely to send a team in a fast boat? They won't come close. We have Elrad. Elrad? I ask. Long-range audio device. It will blow their eardrums at 2,000 meters. They'll have other gunmen on board. South America's behind us. If a second gunman was after anyone, they'd have made their move, then jumped ship to wait for a boat. We're clear of Panama and Colombia. I can't see them risking anything this far away. Trust me, I sail this route regularly. I know it. I know them. Relax. Even though I don't know this part of the world, I understand his logic. If he's not in control, he's hiding it well. I run the day back in my head. Now, I understand the police arrest was at the airport, and the case that was left behind may have been someone's payoff, and Georgie got it. I bet the customs officers had to dress the Latina as one of the three police officers who ran on the ship, while Ronnie and I were watching the hole being painted. I would lay money on only two police leaving the ship. But why has Mrs. L. Ray chosen this cruise to flee? It is not the most direct transatlantic cruise home. If Hunter is her romantic interest and passport out of South America, he is dangerously stupid. If he is against her on a mission, who is pulling the strings? The waiter takes our order and leaves. Relax. Your holiday starts now. I would like to be able to enjoy a relaxing meal and a vacation, but I'm someone who needs all the T's crossed, and I don't believe him. I think the company will ask you back. You've done South America now. You might want to try some other routes for a while, Hunter suggests. I fancy a glass of wine, I suggest, taking in his phrase that suggests I avoid South America. White or red? he asks me. White. It's lunchtime. Leave it with me. And he has a simple exchange with the wine waiter. He offers his cruise card, and I don't suggest I pay. We can both act like multimillionaires. At least, that's what he's implying. I only ordered a small glass, because it gets warm quickly here. But if you like it, let me indulge you with a bottle. I'm on duty. Is Ronnie in on this? I ask. Only as much as you. No one needs to know more than they do, Hunter says. Then we can all be winners. You've done well out of this. Except mine and Ronnie's pictures are with her people, and they appear to want her and the money, or both, returned. This gang know me too. That doesn't make me feel any better. <laughs>